Coming up on BG24 News. The Hatch was held on campus for the third year in a row. We'll have an inside look. Plus, a nationally acclaimed economist is coming to speak to BGSU students. And BGSU is making some changes to its charter. We have the details. We'll also take a look at your full Black Swamp weather forecast. Welcome to your campus and community connection. Live local news starts right now. This is BG24 News, live at 5.30. Good evening, everyone. I'm Nick Dombey. And I'm Amy Steigerwald. Thanks for joining us tonight. The College of Business and Business at BGSU has maintained its business accreditation. Less than 5% of business schools worldwide have earned and maintained this business accreditation. The accreditation was given by the Association of Advanced Collegiate Schools of Business. This is the longest serving global accrediting association for business schools. In related news, the College of Business Administration will wrap up Entrepreneurship Week today and tomorrow. The newest class of the Dallas Hamilton Entrepreneurship Hall of Fame will be inducted today. Then tomorrow, the college will host the 12th annual SIBO Series Entrepreneurship. The founder of Monster.com Monster is the keynote speaker. The event starts at 9 a.m. in the Union Ballroom. Nationally acclaimed economist is coming to speak to students next week. Brian Kaplan will discuss the value of higher education and his work on public policy and economic philosophy. The lecture is sponsored by several BGSU programs. The event starts Tuesday at 6 p.m. in Room 111 in Oles Camp. It is free and open to the public. And Kaylee Hodge joins us now for a live look at the weather. Kaylee? Thanks, guys. Well, I'm outside right now, and as you can see, it's starting to sprinkle. We've got some uh, ripples in those puddles down there right now, and that's only going to be getting worse as we head into the next couple minutes. We've got another cloud coming in with lots of rain showers in store for us. Currently, it's 68 degrees. Tonight, we're going to start to clear up a bit as we head into tomorrow before we have our second round of thunderstorms and showers tomorrow night. Stay tuned, and I'll have more of my full forecast coming up soon. Thank you, Kaylee. A best-selling author is coming to Bowling Green tomorrow. Craig Johnson, writer of the Walt Longmire Mysteries, will discuss his book. The event starts at 7 p.m. in the Wood County District Public Library. Johnson's books will be available for purchase and signing. Two changes are coming to BGSU's academic charter. The first is in regards to academic honesty. The policy will now be housed within divisions of student affairs. The second is regarding absences. The facility members are now encouraged to allow absences in the university-related activities. The Senate voted in favor of the changes on Tuesday. A Bowling Green car dealership was recently the victim of a robbery once again. Al Smith Chrysler Dodge Deep and Ram more tires and rims stolen from their lot earlier this week. This is the second robbery of this type in less than a month. Thousands of dollars of property were stolen. Well, coming up when we return, the Miles Dairy Queen in downtown BG is under new management. And a shooting took place in Perrysburg earlier this week. Stay with us. Miles Dairy Queen in downtown Bowling Green is under new management for the first time in 40 years. Reporter Candace Bridges tells us what changes will be made. Bowling Green's Dairy Queen, loved by locals, is now under new management. The ice cream parlor is known for its great hospitality and large portion sizes. New owner Mario Kesey says his goal is to improve Dairy Queen's service. Then we want to make it more efficient, uh, faster, you know, faster service. Sometimes you come in here on, uh, you know, on a night, on a Friday night, and wait 30 minutes in, in line, and we want to make sure that that that's quicker. Kesey says that Dairy Queen's portions and services will remain the same. Management plans on adding orange Julius smoothies and DQ bakes to the menu. Employee Jimmy Hill says he supports the changes. I think it's, it'll be nice to like just give it like a 21st century a little bit more of a look. I mean, they're not looking to change a whole bunch of things, but I don't know. It's going to be exciting. Dairy Queen will continue to serve customers the old-fashioned way, but with a 21st century approach. Reporting for BG24, I'm Candace Bridges. For more information, you can visit Miles Dairy Queen's Facebook page. BGSU hosted its third annual version of Shark Tank, known as The Hatch. Reporter Nick Dombey went to the Stroh Center to find out what happened. This year, thousands of students and community members gathered at the Stroh Center for BGSU's third annual The Hatch. 
The competition allows potential entrepreneurs to propose their ideas to business investors. The innovative ideas range from translating teddy bears to 3-in-1 lawn game sets and a synchronizing music app. Junior Devin Williams, creator of MuSync, was one of two contestants that won support from the investors. It was a shock to me, but I'm so excited and thankful for that opportunity. Many of the proposed ideas focused on connecting people together, which was Devin's main goal. We love music and we love to connect with people, and so I figured if I could come up with something that brought music and the connections of people together, then that would be perfect, and that's exactly what MuSync does. The dean of the business college, Raymond Braun, said this year's hatch was excellent. Students were very well prepared, uh, the investors asked good questions, mentors did a great job advising, so another successful year. Williams says this experience has now opened doors for her own business. Just learning. I want to learn how to do this. I now have the opportunity. I've started my own business and now I have the funds to do that and they want to work with me. At 20, I'll be 21 in May. At 21 years old, I will have started my own business and so that's exciting for me. That's a huge accomplishment. The Hatch event continues to grow each year and encourages students from all majors to participate. All of the nine contestants were presented with an opportunity of a lifetime and the Hatch was a major step towards making their dreams a reality. Reporting for BG24 News, I'm Nick Dombey. For more information on The Hatch, visit www.bgsu.edu slash business. In related news, a truck accident occurred yesterday morning on U.S. Route 6. The incident occurred next to a construction zone near Interstate 75. Two crash, two crash semi-trucks were found at the scene. No injuries were reported. School president at Owens Community College has extended his contract. Michael Bauer will now serve another year as president. The Board of Trustees approved this extension on Tuesday. Bauer served the past three years as president and his new contract will last until June of 2016. A Perrysburg man is in a Wood County jail after a shooting on Tuesday. He was charged with shooting his stepdaughter. He pleaded not guilty to the charge in court yesterday. His stepdaughter was brought to the University of Toledo Medical Center for treatment. North Baltimore EMS and fire dispatching will now come from the Wood County Sheriff's Office. The Village Council unanimously approved this move on Tuesday. The move is to help improve response times and increases in the number of dispatchers. The police dispatching will stay in North Baltimore. Coming up when we return, the Ohio State Highway Patrol is asking people to remember to buckle up. Plus, we'll have your full Black Swamp weather forecast. Stay with us. Live local forecast with BG24 Black Swamp weather. All right, we have some crazy weather out there right now, Bowling Green. Good evening, everyone. I'm Kaylee Hodge with your Black Swamp weather forecast. Current look outside, it's 68 degrees. We have some intermittent rain showers and sunshine going on out there. And we also have that tornado alert and uh, potential sighting in our area. Now, I want you guys to know this tornado warning and watch has not been confirmed by the National Weather Service. So it's not an official tornado warning. However, we've also been seeing those pictures of that funnel cloud and wall cloud out of Fostoria and southeastern Wood County. So we are cannot confirm that there is a tornado in our area, but we do advise you to use the utmost caution if you're heading out of the area right now. Tonight, we're going to be cooling down to 52 degrees. We're going to be having those continued scattered thunderstorms in our area, but that will not be severe like we're potentially seeing right now. And we'll also have the south-southwest wind coming in at 25 miles per hour. Now, that southerly wind is what's bringing in this warm area that we're experiencing right now, but it will be changing as we head into tomorrow. Tomorrow, our winds are going to shift. They're going to be coming out of the west at 23 miles per hour. It's going to be a bit cooler now because it's going to have those westerly winds. It's going to be 61 degrees is our high. We'll also have some sunshine in our area and a very low humidity of only 36%. So it's going to be a really pleasant day to get out, maybe go for a walk or ride your bike. Tomorrow night, we're going to be cooling down to 36 degrees. We're not going to have as many clouds in our area to act as a blanket. So it's going to be hitting a cooler temperature, but it will be less likely to have any severe chances of precipitation, only a 20% chance, and no thunder in our area. A look at our temperatures across the area. We have a very wide spread right now. Fostoria is at 70, Fremont's at 73, and then as you head up to our north, Toledo's at 64, Swanton and Wauseon are also at 64 because we have a, uh, a warm front coming through our area right now as we speak. Now that's what's bringing these potentially severe thunderstorms and potentially even tornadic thunderstorms that we're seeing out there right now. 
a look at our local radar, you can see this blip right here by Bowling Green is what's causing that potential thunderstorm and tornadic warning. And as you head off to the south by Columbus and into uh, Cambridge area, we have this uh, even more strong thunderstorms. That's what's bringing a potential watch or a confirmed watch, excuse me, in their area. I just want to show you that watch real quick right here. You can see it in the southernmost portion of Ohio, off into Pennsylvania and a bit into northwest um, uh, northern West Virginia, and that's a severe thunderstorm watch. So that means there's potential for some wind damage, maybe thunderstorms to have a tornadic spur. We are not certain. We're watching that right now. Those are moving through those areas. A look as it's going across the nation, you can see that all across the Midwest we have this going on. Here's a uh, cell in Ohio, and we have this low pressure system that's causing this front right here that's going to be giving those potential tornadic thunderstorms off into Illinois and Iowa. I just want to show you that front real quick. You can see it right here. There's that low pressure front and there's that warm system, uh, warm front that's coming through our area bringing those, those warm uh, temperatures and thunderstorms. As you head over the next couple weeks or next couple days, you can see we're going to be warming up to 60 tomorrow, 60 again on Saturday before we warm up into the beginning of next week, 68 on Sunday, 71 on Monday, and then we have our next chance for thunderstorms and rain showers as we start our next week. Well, Kaylee, it certainly was, certainly was a bit chaotic before the show with uh, the sirens going off yeah, and all that. Yeah, right. We we will, we have confirmed that there is no, there is no tornado warning. It has been called off, but um, stay with us on social media and yes. we will keep you updated for that. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, resurfacing work in, on the Ohio Highway 65 is starting this month. The Ohio Department of Transportation will begin work on Route 65, Ohio 235, and Ohio 64. The resurfacing work is said to last through August. The construction will cause daytime lane restrictions over the course of the summer. The Ohio, State the Ohio State Highway Patrol has recently reported that deadly car crashes are on the rise. There have been, there's been a 50% increase in car crashes in Northwest Ohio in comparison to last year. Patrol officers claim impaired drivers and people not wearing seatbelts are the cause of this increase. Changes were made to the current concealed carry law in Ohio. The bill will now allow anyone 21 or older to carry a concealed weapon without having to take the required training for a permit. The new changes will help people protect themselves and protect law enforcement from searching and detaining people because of gun possession. And now Juan Pimiento joins us for a look at campus and community sports. Juan. Thanks, Amy. Coming up, the football team's annual spring game is this Saturday. Hear what coaches and players have to say. And the baseball team hit the field this week. See if they extended their winning streak. All this and more when we come back. It's unfalcon believable coverage that you won't get anywhere else. This is BG24 Sports. Welcome to BG24 Sports. I'm Juan Pimiento. BG Baseball's two-game winning streak is over after a 4-1 loss to Eastern Michigan on Wednesday. The Falcons' only run came in the top of the first inning courtesy of a senior Brandon Howard scoring on a defensive error. Eastern Michigan responded with a three-run sixth inning. The Eagles reached base in five consecutive at-bats and took the lead on two straight wall pitches by freshman Wes Rickenberg. The loss put the Falcons at a 9-18 overall record. Bowling Green is to road this weekend for a three-game series against the Ohio Bobcats. The series is set to begin tomorrow at 4 p.m. The football team continues their offseason with the annual spring game this Saturday at Doy Perry Stadium. The team is set to run nearly 160 snaps in 95 minutes of play. The game marks the conclusion of spring practice, which started back in March 17th in preparation for the 2015 season. Number one thing in the spring game is to make sure everyone comes out healthy. You know, we're going to put a lot of good football players out there. They're going to play extremely hard in front of their family and friends. And uh, we'll go over 100 snaps. And, and hopefully, when it's all said and done, regardless of who does good and who does bad, if everyone's healthy, then I'll feel really good about it. I'm just hoping to see uh, up-tempo execution by the offense. Um, you know, we, we've made a big, big jump from, you know, last spring to this spring. Um, coach said that... You know, the jump that we are going to have, we don't, we're not going to understand it in our first year. But when we get to our second year, it's just going to be it's something's going to click. And you can feel something clicking right now. The spring game is scheduled for 1 p.m. at the Doit. The track and field team hits the road this week to participate in the Tennessee Relays in Knoxville. The Falcons are coming off a 103-96 victory over MAC rival Toledo. The victory keeps BG in fifth place in the MAC rankings. The Relays are hosted by the Tennessee Volunteers. BGSU is entering 23 athletes in 16 different events. The Relays begin today and are set to run until Saturday afternoon. Softball season continues with conference play this weekend as the Falcons host Miami and Ball State. The Falcons coming. 
weekend after a 3-2 loss at Western Michigan and have lost three of their last four games. They currently hold a 12-16 overall record and 3-3 in MAC play. They play a doubleheader against Miami tomorrow afternoon. The Red Hawks will come to BG looking to bounce back after a loss to Rice State. They currently hold a 21-14 overall record and 5-1 in the MAC. Then the Falcons host a two-game series against Ball State. The Cardinals are coached by 2014 MAC Coach of the Year Tyra Perry. They sit at an even 18-18 overall and 4-1 conference records. First pitch for Friday's games are 1 and 3 p.m., Saturdays at 2 p.m., and Sunday at 1 p.m. The tennis team looks for the first victory of the season when they take on the Miami Red Hawks on Saturday. The Falcons have lost all 14 of their games this season and come into the game already eliminated from the MAC championships. Miami with his Bowling Green looking to stay atop the standings in the MAC. The Red Hawks hold, currently hold a 6-0 conference record and 12-6 overall. First serve at Keith Courts this Saturday is scheduled for 1 p.m. That's all for BG24 Sports. Check us out on Facebook and follow us on Twitter at BG24 Sports now for the latest news and scores. I'm Juan Pimiento. We'll be right back. The Toledo Zoo is hosting an adult overnight event in their new aquarium. Guests of the nightcap will receive a catered meal with drinks. Tents and cots will be provided for those who attend, as well as options to sleep next to the marine life exhibits. Slots will be open from April 16th until September 26th. Visit ToledoZoo.org for more information. The Out of Darkness Walk takes place this weekend on campus. The walk is sponsored by the American Foundation for Suicide and Prevention and Omega Phi, Omega Phi Alpha. The goal of the walk is to spread awareness on suicide prevention. The walk takes place Saturday at 10 a.m. on the old campus lawn by Williams Hall. Well, it's certainly been a crazy evening for weather, and yes. uh, yeah. Kaylee's here with the last look. It's going to be good in the next few days, right? Yeah, we're going to have really good weather for the walk tomorrow, uh, or my bad, Saturday. We have a high temperature of 60 on Friday. We're going to be clearing up with 0% chance of precipitation over the weekend. Temperatures in the mid to upper 60s before we get some cloud cover and next chance of precipitation in the beginning of next week. Highs will be right around 70. Well, Kaylee, we certainly did have a scare there for about yes. a couple, 30 minutes ago. Yeah. Uh, tornado warnings, the sirens were going off. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Okay, so the, um, the National Weather Service did not issue an official tornado warning, tornado watch. Uh, the most that was officially issued by the National Weather Service is we did have a mesoscale discussion over our area debating on whether or not to issue a watch. Now, just saying that the National Weather Service did not issue does not mean that they didn't potentially miss a tornado a funnel cloud, wall cloud. We've seen pictures of those actually over Fostoria and Seneca County, but those have moved out of our area. All should be safe now, so we should be good for the next couple hours. Yeah, those pictures, I mean, Regi24, yeah. we did retweet a couple of them, so be sure yeah. to stay with us on social media for more updates on that. Yes. All right, well, that's all for BG24 News tonight. Check out these stories and more online at bg24news.org. And check us out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Also, tune in here tomorrow at 5.30 for our public affairs show. The director of BGSU's production of You're in Town will be on the show. For BG24 News, I'm Nick Dombey here with Amy Stegerwolf, Kaylee Hodge, and Juan Pimiento. Have a good night, everyone.